Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about word count. I'm going to show you how to count the number of words in a text field, specifically a long text field, but I mean, you could do a short text field if you wanted to, in your Microsoft Access database. This is a question I get asked every now and then. People are like, how can I count the number of words in a particular field? Like people that copy and paste, I don't know, resumes or homework assignments or whatever. They want to know how many words are in it. Now, Microsoft Word does this pretty automatically. But you could very easily do it in Access with just a wee bit of code. And that's why I put developer up here. Don't be scared if you see developer. This just means it needs a little bit of VBA. I just started doing this. So if you've never done any programming before in VBA, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started. VBA is not scary. Don't be afraid of it. It's real easy. I'll walk you through it step by step, but go watch this first so you got some background. We're also going to use an if then statement, right? If there's no text in this field, then the word count is zero, that kind of thing. Go watch my string functions video. Specifically, we want the len function, how to calculate the length of a string, how many characters are in a string. This will come in handy. And if you don't know what null values are, go watch this. Null value basically is a field that has nothing in it. So no, there's no value, it's null. So go watch all those videos. If you don't know what I was talking about with any of those things, then come on back, I'll wait for you. Go on, go do it now. Okay, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And let's say we got this long text field here. We want to put something in it. Let's go to uh, let's go to James Kirk here. And I just happen to have some text in my clipboard. Let me paste it in. Okay, there we go. Space the final front. And you have to say this in either Kirk's voice or Picard's voice in your head. I think I think honestly, I love Picard more, but I think Kirk did this better. Space the final. Right? Okay. Anyways, let's uh, let's just make a little room here so we can see what's going on. Let's say we don't need this. Let's make this a little bigger. Let's get rid of these guys. We don't need those. Let's make this bigger like this. Come here. Come here. Make it nice and big. Okay. Let's put a text box down here that we could put our number of words count in. So you can just grab one of these. I'm just going to grab one of these. Let me just grab this one. Copy, paste. It's easier to copy and paste something that's already on the form, right? Slide you over like that. Slide you over like this. And this will put in here words. Now this guy's already bound to the country field. So let's go to all. We're going to get rid of that control source. So now it's not bound anywhere. It's an unbound text box. It means it doesn't get its data from the table. You can put whatever you want in there. Let's give it a good name. We'll call this num words. I don't like the word word because word is a reserved word. And if you don't know what reserved words are, I'll put a link to a video down below you can go watch. Basically, they're words in your database you shouldn't use, like name, that kind of thing. Date is a reserved word, right? Okay, so let's make a default value here. Let's go uh, zero, just in case. And we'll put a little button here that we can click on. I'll just copy one of these buttons. Copy, paste, slide it down here. We'll put in here count, right? We're going to click on this button to count the number of words up top. Just like that. Okay. Let's give this button a good name. Not going to leave it command 32, right? Let's call it uh, count word button like that. In fact, that reminds me, I have an informal uh, rule that I use. I try to keep everything singular. I don't always remember. So let's, let's change num words to num word. It's just sometimes when you're when you're going along and you're coding, right? And you, and you get to a field, you got to type in and you're like, oh man, was it num word or num words? I have that mess me up all the time. I got a field in my, my website's database called comments, T for comment table, and it, that messes me up constantly. So since then, which is fairly recently, I've tried to keep everything singular if I can. Okay, I point that out because it's a tip. It's a tip for me, and hopefully it's a tip for you. That's the whole reason you're watching these videos, right? To get tips. Okay. All right, so let's close this down. Close that down. Let's come back into our form here. Let's go back to Jimmy Kirk. There we go. All right, now my button doesn't do anything yet, so let's put some code in the button. And when I click on the button, it'll count these words up. Now, how are we going to count these words? There's a couple of different ways you could do it. One, and and uh, since I've since I grew up with basic programming, right? I had my first Tandy Radio Shack color computer when I was like 
eight years old. For me, I always think of programmatic, like looping type solutions. That that just comes naturally to me because it's what I learned first as a child. So my first instinct is to do a for next loop, right? Start at the beginning and just count down each character in this string and just count every space. Okay, and that is certainly fine. If you take the number of spaces in here and add one, you get the number of words, right? If you only got three words in here, you'll have two spaces. Add one, and you got the number of total words in here. Okay, we'll get we'll talk about hyphens later. Yeah, that this is a matter of whether you wanted to you know define that as one word or two. We'll talk about that later. Anyways, so that's my first thought, and that certainly would work fine, but. Take a, take a step back and try to think of it, is there an easier way? Because brute force approaches like that tend to not be very efficient. And yeah, with something that small, it's not a big deal. But if you've got, you know, tens of thousands of words in there, that might take a little while to process. So think about it mathematically. If I take the total length of that string, okay, and then remove all of the spaces and calculate the length of that, the difference between those two numbers should be the number of spaces in there, right? And then that is the number of words. Of course, add one. So if I've only got, let's say this is my string here, that's what, 16 characters across, right? If I remove the two spaces and count it again, that's 14 characters, right? The difference is two, add one, three words. So that's how we're going to approach this. And yes, a lot of times when I'm programming stuff, I'll do the brute force approach first to get it to work. So I've got a working solution. And then I usually go back and think of, okay, are there ways I could optimize this to make it faster, to make it more efficient so that I don't have to just loop through everything constantly? It's like once I learned record sets, for those of you who are a little more advanced and know what record sets are, you know, I tend to see record sets in my sleep and that's how I want to solve every problem. Even though sometimes S the standard SQL statements will work just fine too, like an update statement or an append statement or whatever. So, okay, so let's see how this code works. Ready? Let's go to design view. Right click, build event. Let's bring up my code builder. All right, here's my button. And, and yes, if, if you're thinking you don't have to use a button to do this, you could do an after update event for the notes field. So every time it's updated, it'll update the count. And you could also put it in the on current event. So as you move from record to record, it'll constantly update that count. That's up to you. I'm just going to throw it in a button. But I have videos on how to do both of those things after update events and on current events. I'll put links down below if you want to go watch those. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is check to see if this field is blank or null. Okay. So if is null notes, that's the name of the field. Or if notes is the empty string. Now, there's a difference between those. I got a whole separate video on that coming out. There's null strings and there's empty strings, right? Null value is empty strings. There's a slight difference. Basically, one never had a value. It's empty, right? Or excuse me. Let me start that over. Basically, a null value never had a value. And an empty string might have had a value at one point that was erased. And there's some other subtleties too, but that's the basics of it. But you got to check for both of those situations sometimes. And this is one of them, okay? Then, and that should be notes, see? See, singular plural almost got me in trouble there. Okay, we're going to say num word equals zero. There's no words. Else, I got some stuff. All right, so how are we going to calculate this? Well, it's very simple. It's going to be num word equals the length of notes minus the length of some other string, okay, plus one character. Now, what's the other string? Well, we're going to take notes and we're going to replace the strings with a blank. All right, replace notes, string, all right, one, one space with an empty string like that. So it's going to say the replace function is going to take the notes, whatever in notes, find every space and replace it with an empty string. Okay. And in this particular instance, you don't have to worry about it actually modifying notes because the replace can actually modify notes too. I'm going to show you that in the extended cut. Okay. And sometimes what do we got? Oh, I'm missing a parenthesis. See there, you got to be careful, right? Replace notes. And I'm missing a parenthesis right there. Close parentheses. And there we go. All right. Control Y to get rid of that extra little line in there. Save it. Let's give it a good debug compile just to make sure. All right. Everything looks good. Come back over here. We're going to close that. We're going to open it back up again. Let's do it on this one first. Click. Oh, there's four words. Look at that. It counted them all up, took out the spaces, added them all up again. 
There were three spaces removed, so the total is four. Let's go to our space the final frontier. Hit the count button. Boom. 37. There you go. All right, now it's 37 if you count five year as one word. Okay, what if you want to deal with that as two words? Well, I'll talk about that in the extended cut. I will also talk about how to deal with grandma that still puts two spaces after a period. If you learn how to type in 1975, right, and you were taught to put two spaces after every period, you're going to get a wrong word count. So I'll show you how to deal with that in the extended cut as well. What's the extended cut? Well, that's the extra video for the members. Join, become a member. You get all kinds of extra stuff. I just recently started doing extended cuts for the fast tips because I got my tech help videos too. But those are a lot longer. The fast tips are generally shorter. I don't know. It's basically the same stuff, just long versus short. Like a, like the pig with the curly straight. Curly straight, right? Um, yeah, we'll do a little extra stuff like this. We'll deal with the double spaces. We'll deal with the hyphens. We'll do some looping and we'll do some other crazy stuff. And if you like this kind of programming stuff, and you think it's kind of cool, because it is. You want to be one of the nerdy kids and join us programmers? Well, check out my Access Developer Level 1 class. It's on my website. I'll put a link down below. I'll teach you all the cool things you need to know to start being a programmer in Microsoft Access. So that's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.